Um, so my name is uh, Robert Knapp. I founded um, CyberGhost, uh, which is uh, now a joint stock company. A um, couple of years ago here in um, here in Romania, and uh, I want to tell you about that story um, because I would like to encourage you to do what you do here: um, starting businesses, starting startups, working in the IT industry. And I would like to encourage you to do it from here. And I would like to explain you. Uh, why is that? So this has nothing to do with the with the speech at all. Um, I have to put the slide because I lost a bet a couple of years ago. That's a football club from my hometown, uh, Hamburg. It's the football club St. Pauli, and I lost a bet with a diehard fan. So I have to put the slide wherever I am. I'm super <laughs> sorry. It's just it's just like that. So. A short pitch on how to become a successful entrepreneur. Because this is a pitching session, I try to put it in a, in, a, in a small pitch. The problem that we face is, where do you start a business if you want to start a business? And you can do that from many spaces in the world. For example, from, from London, it's a, it's, a, it's a hub. A lot of people are in London. But the problem is that these idiots just decided to leave the European Union. So <laughs> nobody really knows what uh, What's going on there? Uh, you can do that from, from Berlin. Uh, it is a hub. I'm from Germany. But the problem is, if you move there, you have to learn words, words like Donau, Dampfschifffahrts, Elektrizitäts, Hauptbetriebswerksbau, Unternehmensgesellschaft, Betäubungsmittel, Verschreibungsverordnung, Rindfleisch, Etikettierungsüberwachungsaufgabengesetz. And I'm not kidding, these are real German words. And if. <laughs> If I'm doing the Hitler, okay, that's okay. <laughs> if you're doing it, if you ever do that, you know, when you talk with me, I would be offended. I'm funny. You're not, because I'm a German. So you, you, you could also go, so Germany is not, not, not really the place where you would, would put an international uh, uh, company. You could go to the, to the Silicon Valley. The problem there is their CEO. <laughs> 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 Is a little bit fucked up, so <laughs> no, nobody knows what's going on there. So the solution is Bucharest, software as a service, startup as a service. So we can do a lot in Bucharest. <laughs> right now it's version 1.0. We all know that. I'm <laughs> I'm in Bucharest since uh, 2011, um, but we all know version 2.0 will look uh, way better. Um, we just got a new CEO as well. <laughs> Look, the good thing is, the good thing here is, um, is that the shareholders <laughs> just found out <laughs> how, how to run the business here. So, um, so I think really Romania is, uh, is the solution. I think that Bucharest is uh, the solution to the problem where and how to, f to, to, to build startups. Um, <clears throat> to be a bit more serious now, I started my business 2011 with uh, seven employees, few thousand users, few servers in few countries, a little bit of revenue, uh, bootstrapped. Um, bootstrapped, no investment behind it. Now we have like 55 employees. Um, one, 10 million users, 180, 440 servers. We are running for uh, around half a million revenue a year this year. Um, and we just had an, an exit, so we are part now of the Crossrider Group, uh, a public listed company in London that uh, sees, so uh, we have uh, right now hubs in Tel Aviv, in, in, in Romania, in, in London, in Aachen, in the Philippines. I hope I don't forget anyone in the family there. Um, but we see Romania as a strategic, very important uh, hub, and we think that um, we have uh, here the right place to invest uh, further. CyberGhost is a cybersecurity company, so everybody who works in cybersecurity is a welcome partner for us in, in future to talk with. So the question is, it's kind of a success story, and is it possible because we are a Romanian startup, <clears throat> or all thought we are a Romanian startup? 
if you talk with a lot of people here, usually it is like, look guys, we have to leave the country as soon as possible. We have to go to London, we have to go to Berlin, we have to go to the Silicon Valley, because that's where the music plays. I just did it like a little bit uh, uh, ironic. I don't think that the music is playing there. I think that the music is playing here. And I think that our company and our success story is a good example for it. Um, <clears throat> I will tell you the story about Juan Adima. That is this one. That's our uh, uh, group picture. Uh, as the company grew, so Anna is my first hire. She was always there, so these are pictures from the beginning of the company. She was my first hire, and um, I needed somebody who could, you know, um, set up the company, help me with everything. Uh, I'm a German, you know, I don't know a lot about uh, uh, Romania, the culture, the, the, the things here. So she was setting it up. And <laughs> it's a true story. I was, I, I just hired her. Where is, where is Oana? I think you're here. <laughs> I, just, I just hired her. We met, I think, two times or something like that. And um, I said, Oana, I'm going to fly back to Germany. I'm busy. So um, I'm going to wire you some money with the uh, Western Union. Um, I just rented an office, by the way. Here's the keys. Take care of that. Uh, after I come back, we have working spaces for eight people and we can start working. Bye. <laughs> so if I would have done that with a German uh, assistant, I just hired her, would have done that, she would resign immediately. She would call the workers' union, <coughs> or call a mental institution, because <laughs> she would ask for more details, <laughs> because that's not good enough, uh, that's not a good German briefing, just make it work. She would ask for a plan at all, or she would re request a plan. So, and Oana just did it. So when I came back, there was an office. So I learned my first lesson about Romania. Romanians get shit done. <laughs> so <clears throat> could I have bootstrapped abroad? If you look at the, the average costs that we have in the European Union, you see countries, countries like Denmark and Great Britain, we just talked about London and the Brexit, who are at the top, you see Germany at the, at the average level, and you see down there Romania with a 50% average life index. So that means each euro you make as a Romanian startup and you cash it in is worth two euros. And each euro you cash in in the United States is maybe worth 20 cents because the costs are eight times higher. No. I couldn't have done it anywhere else. Romanians can reach growth stage by bootstrapping. You cannot do it in any other of these locations I just mentioned. Could I have gone in, uh, internationally abroad? Because CyberGhost is doing like 99 point something percent of the revenue abroad. We are not doing the, the, the revenue in, in, in Romania. So <clears throat> we started an international business. Would I have been able to do that somewhere else? U United States. <clears throat> so U.S. companies, how, how they do it? They roll out in the U.S. first. Why is that? 320 million people is good enough for a market to start with. We all would be happy to have like a 300 million market in Romania, so we would maybe then start also uh, Romanian versions of our applications first because we know the market. Americans can do that. Then they roll out their English version globally. Still good enough because you catch all the countries that have uh, English speakers. Then they get lost and wonder about copycats in local markets. Because it takes them too long. And every time they hit the market, there's already a copycat doing what they are doing, and they get completely lost. German companies roll out in the DACH region first. DACH means Germany, Austria, Switzerland. That's the German-speaking countries. 97 million people, still good enough, strong economies. You can do a lot there. Then they want to go global and wonder why nobody speaks German. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Then they get lost. <laughs> Romanian companies roll out worldwide at day one because 20 million people is not good enough. The local market is shit. It's a shithole, basically. And that's good for the, for the local uh, IT community and for the local internet startups because from day one, you focus on international business. So every young Romanian anyway speaks 1,000 languages. As I. <laughs> My English is so bad, you know, and I'm here since five years. And uh, 
you know, if I, if I speak with, uh, with Romanians, I mean, it's, it's, it's Romanian, it's English for sure, I mean, for sure. <laughs> then it's Spanish, it's Ita Italian, it's something else. I mean, it's like 1,000 languages per person. So it's not a problem um, uh, to do it. And that's how you win the game. So I, I, I think really the advantage, the cultural advantage, with a mix of, of talented uh, uh, foreign language speakers plus a shitty local market is helping a lot to develop international businesses. And we are talking here about tech startups and uh, a tech community who has to go international. So Romanians think global from day one. It's a huge advantage. Could I have built an A-team abroad? Because, you know, building, a, building a, a company is all about a good idea. We know that about funding. You don't need funding here because you can bootstrap it. And it's about a good team. So can you, good, can you find good, good, good people here? So. <clears throat> I have to explain why I put uh, her here. She is the German Chancellor since 2005. That means we have a generation of young people in Germany growing up, knowing only this face, ruling the country. We have teenagers that we have to explain that theoretically we could elect another Chancellor, <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen. <laughs> and by the way, we call her Muti. That means mama. <clears throat> well, you know, Romanians don't have a fear of change. You ch it's just Germans do have a fear of change. We would never change something that somehow works, you know? And there's no doubt that Muti kind of did a good job, but, you know, maybe, maybe we could, le could elect another government at some point. So, and, and Romanians don't have a fear of change, not at all. Um, and that is one of the most important things when it comes to building a, a, a team. I don't look so much on tech talent here. I mean, there's no doubt that Romania is full of tech talent. Um, there's no doubt that uh, companies like Microsoft, uh, Google, Facebook, whatever, try to hire people to, uh, from Romania to work in their, their headquarters. There's no doubt that we see right now international corporation pulling into the market, hiring talent because the talent is here. Um, we spoke about the, the language talent, so I'm not really focusing on that. There are smart people everywhere in the world. Um, but they are, they are for sure as well here. It is about the fact that if you build a startup and if you run a, a company under uncertainty, because you want to do something and you're not sure if you succeed or not. That means you cannot just put it on the, on the road and then just drive the road. You have to, you know, go left and go right and pivot and test and be fearless and don't have a, a, a fear of change. As I started with the explanation of what would a, a German assistant do, you know, in Germany all, all, it's all about security, you know, not changing too much. And, and, and that's why maybe the German car industry, who is really a strong industry, is losing the game against Tesla. And it might be the same as well now for the United States of America. Yes, they have been very uh, even innovative in the past, but maybe they fear change now. And that's why they elected this buffoon as a, as a, as a president. And that's maybe why their, their corporations and their big companies have a problem with adapting the future. Because, yes, they are giants, but maybe they are giants that are moving right now pretty, pretty slow. So Rom Romania's advantage is, as I said, every young Romanian sp speaks 1,000 languages. Um, <laughs> Romania has the best shareholding structure, the Romanians. And believe me one thing, um, I'm not kidding when I say that. If you, if you look at the world map right now and you see how countries change politically and that has an impact on, on economy, always, it is like, would we be as entrepreneurs more successful in a closed market with national barriers? Or would we be more successful in a world without borders where we can trade and exchange and hire and go and make experiences and don't need visas and don't need to pay taxes when we you know, move our digital goods around? I mean, the answer is pretty clear. Um, we need free markets and we need free exchange of goods and we need to travel and we need want to hire people from abroad and we want to go and work abroad because we want to make experiences. Um, Romania is right now the only country in Europe where it is 
obvious that a whole generation, maybe two generations, decided to stick to Europe and to show their government the way into the future. Um, and this, this is a big advantage uh, that I also see for, for investing here and, and, and running a company here. Uh, the country is full with uh, uh, smart, self-thought and self-motivated young people. Um, young people stopped leaving the country. They more and more decide to stay in the country and uh, that is a good thing. Um, Romanian people are incredibly disciplined and hardworking. <laughs> it is true. Uh, it is true. I'm a, I, as I say, I'm a German. So w w you can say one thing about German. We are disciplined and hardworking people. Romanians as well. Why is that? I discovered that. During the protests, you know, when the shareholders did these annual meetings and showed the CEO how to run the, the company, the protest happened, you know, after five o'clock, after work, and it went till, let's say, 11, 12, I mean, at the beginning also over the night, but you know, you had to go home at some point because you need a few hours of sleep because you need to go to work. <laughs> it's, it's funny as well, but it is, it is the discipline and the ability that Romanians can do a protest successfully and work at the same time. Do that shit in France. <laughs> <laughs> The French people, the French people would have burned down Paris, one week, nobody at work, economy goes to shit, you know, that is how they deal with it in France, you know. The Romanians did it, you know, in a disciplined way, and they went to work the next day, incredible. More German than, than I am. You people are more German than Germans are German. Um, Romanians have no fear of change, as I, as I already explained. This is a big advantage. Life costs and taxes are low, so everybody can bootstrap and own business. Um, stop, stop telling me that it's not possible to run a business here, blah, 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 blah. And as well, the next rounds, the next stages, you have the MVP program, we have accelerators here, we have business angels, we have people who had already uh, successful exits, who will invest, who, in, who can invest in the country. Um, even, even during the way with the, the exit of CyberGhost, we generated some, some, some cash that will be reinvested somehow in, in, in Romania and so on and so forth. So it is enough money in the, in the country. And you have Kodruza uh, Kavizi. <laughs> what a woman. And, uh, you know, she brings in scalps every month. Um, and uh, this is something that is also very important. I mean, if we talk about corruption and what influence corruption has on, on economy and on running a business and building startups, you would not like to run a business in a, in a country that is super corrupt. And I'm not speaking here about uh, Nigeria and Romania. <clears throat> Romania is about to solve the problem and thanks to her. Every month that goes by, new scalps come in and new people go to jail. I'm talking about countries like the United States of America, you know, where obviously big money influences politics directly now. And if you see what the buffoon is doing right now in the, in the United States, uh, the, the guy they elected as a president, it doesn't help too much to be, uh, to be hopeful uh, that corruption might be, um, um, mm, how shall I say, um, overcome in the United States pretty soon. So, and this has an impact on the quality of the ecosystem that you find. And I think the ecosystem that we find right now in, in, in Romania is quite, uh, quite a good one, and it has a future because you people are working on it. I didn't see any German politician going to jail for corruption in the last 20 years. It just doesn't happen, and don't tell me that there's no corruption there. So I think we should whisper a dream of Bucharest becoming the Silicon Valley of Europe, but it's only becoming the Silicon Valley of Europe not with big investments, not with the big exit, it starts with people first. And the only people who can do something are the shareholders of the company I just talked about, Romania, and that is you guys. So if I, as a German, can make it in five years, building a company from nothing to an exit in five years, um, I think you should do it in three to four to five years as well. Thank you a lot.